If I say blue balls, we'll get demonetized. <laughs> That's Derek. He seemingly forgot his own name, since he never mentions it throughout the entire video. Anyway guys, my 2001 XJ, Project Blue Balls, as we call it, because it's blue, gives us problems, doesn't want to be worked on. I bought it back in 2017, 200,000 miles on it, you know, lots of, some rust, just as a reliable daily drive vehicle. And anybody with a Jeep, you start throwing money at it because it's cool and makes it look better and off-roading and fun stuff. So that's what happened, basically turned from a bone stock, high mileage, slightly rusty Jeep into this here. So we're gonna do a walk around of it, so come check it out. Um, let's start from the left here. So as you can see, these aren't stock battery cables. About a couple months ago, this thing was having some starting issues. Turned the key and nothing would happen really. We suspect we replaced the starter, did nothing. So we said, screw it, let's put some battery cables in it. Now you can buy kits like these online, but what I ended up doing was just building it myself because first of all, it's fun. And, and second of all, I want to say I saved some money. I'm not sure, but Basically what I did was I bought some two gauge welding wire off of Amazon, bought all the, the bits and pieces, the shrink tube and all that stuff. Took one of these crimpers I bought off Amazon as well. These are amazing. You just basically pop your wire in here and hammer it and it's crimped, easy as that. That and some side cuts to get the shielding off of it. It's, it's worked great so far. What else we got? I did an electric fan conversion in here. First and foremost, the reason being, these are kind of known for heat soak problems, uh, especially if you drive around, get up to operating temp, shut it off and try and start it again, basically hot starting the engine. Sometimes, especially in the summertime, we'll have a, used to have a really hard time starting. I kind of looked around and I kind of gathered that, hey, I should put some electric fans in here. So I bought this outer, I guess the shielding or the, the mounting <clears throat> base from the dirt bound. Bought three of these electric fans off Amazon, wired it all in actually through this relay box. Shout out to Nick and Time on that one. Yeah, Nick and Time. And basically what happens is this runs into the cab. There's a controller I'll show you here in a bit when I show you the interior. And that's got a little screen, some buttons, set these fans however you'd like. Again, it's a, it's a Nick and Time kit. It's worked amazingly so far, so highly recommend that. What else have we done in here? Motor mounts. See down here, we got some Brown Dog off-road motor mounts. Big upgrade from the stock kind of weak motor mounts that came with it, especially if you're doing some off-roading and things that I like to do. It's, it's definitely a good upgrade and uh, it was just convenient. It made sense because I had to swap this motor out at about 264,000 miles. So that gives you any indication of how reliable it was. It was still running, but the uh, lifters were sort of kind of worn out. You started up in the cold and it would tick, 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 like it was, uh, it was about to throw a rod or something. So I said, screw it, let's replace the motor before something else happens to it. And that's what I did. And, um, I put those motor mounts in there. In the meantime, I think that's about it here. Anything and everything on the belt. Yeah, yeah, that too. Pretty much uh, other than the AC compressor, which I professionally deleted by taking some side cuts and yoinking the lines off. Everything else has been deleted or sorry, replaced. Water pump, power steering pump. Harmonic balancer. Gearbox too, I guess you can count that as well. Speaking of the gearbox, uh, we'll come down here. Speaking of the gearbox, coming down here. <clears throat> Uh, I've done a few upgrades down here as well. First and foremost, you might notice the steering is definitely aftermarket. I forget which company I bought it. DK Fab? DK Fabworks. Yeah, that's what it was. DK Fabworks, one ton steering kit. Actually very affordable. I think I paid like 230 bucks for it. It's basically a quarter wall DOM. Comes with the Heim joints. Bungs are welded in already. Super easy to install. I, I would say probably the hardest part was taking it to the alignment shop actually. To get it mounted, I took a reamer, 5 8 reamer, drilled the holes out, pretty much threw it in. This is a, a bolt-in kit, so it's super simple um, and affordable. I think the hardest part for me, disclaimer with one ton steering, it might be hard to find shops that will do an alignment for you. The second shop I took it to, they specialized in like off-road vehicles and whatnot. They were able to get that figured out for me. But uh, just a warning, if you guys are think about if you guys have a Jeep and try to put one ton steering in, one of the things you might run into. Second thing, I got diff covers. These solid diff covers are great. 
much bigger and much much thicker and stronger than than your stock little flimsy like sheet metal diff covers that come in these we also got the rough country track bar uh, this one's got the collar here that you could use to adjust your uh, axle left and right so super easy to adjust that which is nice also up here we got a drop bracket uh, for the track bar uh, if you know anything about Jeeps at all, you know you have to get your steering geometry correct. So basically your drag link and your track bar have to be at pretty much parallel to each other or equal angles. And so that's what I had to do to get, get these two bars in the correct geometry. If you come over here, you can see this little red ring here. These are actually... Uh, <laughs> come over here. Yep. So these are actually axle tube seals. So they pretty much just pop in the side of your axle, push your axle shaft through, pump some grease in there. And if you're off-roading a lot, especially these are super handy, keeps all that mud, sand, water, contaminants, what have you, things you don't want inside of your differential out. And they're only about 30 bucks on Amazon. Ball joints. We replaced those. Again, I just replaced them with the stock Spicer ones. And Hope the axle swap. Yep. Yeah, we did that too. Uh, I actually replaced it or upgraded it to uh, uh, Dana 30 high pinion, which is uh, a little bit stronger than the low pinion that come in these. I believe it's 99 to 01. I forget the, the model years exactly that they come in. Uh, maybe it's 2000, 2001. But either way, the uh, high pinion Dana 30 axles that came in the older model XJs are a little bit stronger. So I decided to swap that in it wasn't terrible more time consuming than anything got some cheap chinese rims now your mileage may vary with these i've had some trouble with out of roundness with the wheels pretty much what happened with me was i sunk a bunch of money into figuring out this vibration problem go down the highway 50 55 miles an hour steering wheel shakes i thought you know it could have been the ball joints the the, the tie rod ends the track bar what have you replaced all that stuff Kind of figured it ended up just being the wheel being out of round, being that they're cheap now. So your your mileage may vary with those. Just as a disclaimer, I think these are like 40 bucks a piece, 15 inch rims. And you know, I've heard a lot of people like great luck with them. I was just picked the short straw of the bunch there with that. And I got them wrapped in the uh, 31 inch all terrains, which again, highly recommended. Great for everything off road and snow, except for mud. They do terrible in mud, but that's just the way all terrains are. Okay. Uh, coming down here, you might notice uh, Ohio happens. So when I bought the Jeep back in 17, back when it was in stock form, the sliders were completely rusted out. Like you could stick your entire foot in there and climb up to rockers. the roof if you want to. Sorry, rockers, not sliders. <laughs> These are sliders. Anyways, so actually me and my buddy Jake here, we, we cut the stock uh, rockers out. Bought these sliders off affordable off-road, 260 bucks a set or thereabouts. Two by six square tube and some circular tubing around it. So with these sliders, these are actually weld-in, which I, personally I prefer over bolt-in. Theoretically, they're gonna be stronger. Uh, being weld-in, you're gonna get less rust and whatnot. Weld-in's really your only option if your rockers are rusted out. You just get the bolt-in ones, your, your rusty rockers are still gonna be there, so. You can see more, more Ohio happening here. Gotta get that fixed. These are famous for these window seals wearing out. And then you get a bunch of water, salt, uh, crap down into your door panel. And then they rust the door panel off from the inside. And coming over here, you can see I took off the fenders. Well, I shouldn't say take off. One kind of flew off when I was driving up the highway. It is what it is. So I said, screw it. I'm not going to run around with three fenders and look dumb. Cut them all out. One better clearance too, just I think it looks better. What I did with the fronts, I just marked it out with some Sharpie and some tape. Took an angle grinder and cut everything out. I bought this, uh, it's called the uh, Cowl's Protecto Trim. It's pretty expensive. It's like 50 bucks for a 25 foot roll or something like that. Works great. It's got some like 3M adhesive in the back and you just cut it to size, slap it on, it's on there. Except with um, the rear fenders, the uh, the body panels are pinch welded together. So what you have to do, there's some holes under here and you gotta cut underneath the holes or you'll cut through the pinch weld and open up the, uh, the panel here. You don't wanna do that just to prevent rust and whatnot. But literally same deal here, cut everything out below the mounting holes for that fender and then put that same trim on here. We know some guys that do like the cut and fold method where they cut little sections of this rear fender area out and fold it in. 
and then put the trim over it. I'm not a big fan of that because folding those metal, you know, trim or panels in, you get salt water and stuff collecting in there and you're just gonna get the same or worse rust problems with those fenders, so. Uh, come around back, um, I've got this uh, dirt bound rear bumper put on. I believe it's called the Rock Bruiser. It's actually a cut and fold rear bumper system, which was perfect for what I needed. So what happened with this panel here in stock configuration, you got that, uh, that rear bumper with the plastic cap that runs around that loves to collect salt water and evidently rust. So one time we were working on this thing, we had to take the rear bumper off or the- We're cutting the fenders. We're cutting the fenders. Yeah, we're doing something to it. Took this panel off and found a massive gaping hole. Well, what, what do we do? And ended up finding this system and we ended up grinding and chopping a bunch of metal out and folding it in with this with this bumper it comes with you know the main bumper here and then it comes with the side panel pieces which covers things up and um, you know we did this after we cut all the rust out and then folded everything in as you could tell with this whole project a lot of it is just rust prevention slash like off-roading parts but i'd say like 60 percent of the, the stuff i do to this thing is because of rust okay so the this is that trinity fan controller system i was talking about it talks to the fans in the engine bay there loads of stuff you could do with this super flexible as you can see here i got a temperature readout that's courtesy of a, a probe that uh connects to the system uh you stick into your uh radiator fins reads all your temperatures and whatnot this is where you could control your fans individually uh, as well as temperature ranges so you could you know control specific temperatures that you want your engine to maintain at and um, it'll based off of the readings it'll turn fans on and off and you don't have to touch it uh, which is super nice you could have you know advanced features like delays where if you turn we you shut the jeep off the fans will continue running for a certain amount of time based on what you send the system it it's insane the amount of things you could do with this. Again, highly recommended, and it's a it's a perfect addition if you're thinking about uh, an electric fan conversion on your Jeep. Uh, got my scan gauge here just for you know I have an engine light on, um, you know constantly like every old Jeep does. So it's nice to have something where you just go in here and say, ah! "Hi, I'm shooting a video over here." Uh, uh that's our buddy Logan. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to have a scan gauge, you know, you could, when you have an engine light perpetually on, as in every Jeep, uh, older Jeep, to uh, be able to read individual codes um, that you have. And for mine, it's just stupid EVAP emissions codes, and that's about it. Ham radio. Uh, I have my amateur radio license, so I like to keep this in here, charged up. Intruder beater. If somebody wants to steal it while I'm in here, I'll, you know, give them the flashlight treatment. Last but not least, um, just had to do, these are famous for headliners sagging. It used to look like shower curtains hanging off of my roof in this thing. And I got tired of that. Every time I jumped in, my head would be softly caressing the roof of my Jeep and it was very annoying. So I decided to watch Bleepin' Jeep's video. Uh, came in super handy, pulled, the headliner and assembly out and glued a new one in actually wasn't that terrible i think it might have taken me three or four hours and the headliner material maybe like 40 50 bucks and that spray on 3m adhesive and there you go guys there's the uh, walk around of the of my 2001 xj cherokee and uh don't forget to like like comment share subscribe and uh all that stuff you know what to do thanks guys